everybody fair and put everybody in prison for the same thing. Right? Do you know most black folk who are in prison are there for non-violent drug offenses? Yeah. I ain't saying you drugs, but you know what I'm saying. They ain't stabbed nobody, they ain't murdered nobody, they ain't lynched nobody. They did some stuff that was wrong that the president himself admitted he did when he was young. And some of y'all, if you were to tell the truth in the name of Jesus, Because they be looking at us thinking we doing something from the get -in. And the white brothers and sisters who are doing something never get looked at. Now, I ain't mad if I was white, I'd be saying, cold. <laughs> Don't be messing up my game and hustle because yours is messed up. But think about it. You can be drunk by your own admission to your 40. Your wife tell you to straighten up and fly right, a kind of Nat King Cole theology. Then you go on to own the Texas Rangers. Well, become governor. Now you the president. Talk about the soft bigotry of low expectations. Or you be a young boy from Hawaii. Then went out to hang out in California. Then in New York. Did cocaine by your own admission. Then you became a law student. Then you went on after Columbia. Then you went on to become a community organizer, then a state senator, then a senator, then a president. Neither one of them, Democrat or Republican, had they been arrested and caught, would have made it where they are today. So let's not throw away the key to the jail cell by saying they did the crime, they did the time, when if we have a little bit more judiciousness and a lot So he sends his disciples to ask Jesus. You know how black folks say, we ask them. We ain't asking nothing, we asking you. Negroes got it right. You gotta ask. You gotta cut to the root of the map. You gotta chop it down. Let me ask you this question. Are you the one? The one we've been broadcasting? The one we've been talking about? The one I've spent my life articulating and prophesying about? Are you the one? Tell me without complicated language, without obfuscating discourse. Tell me without parable. Tell me without metaphor or analogy. Tell me plainly. Are you the one? And look at what Jesus does. He refuses to say. Man, don't be lying. You know, sometimes you be mad at God. What you doing? I wouldn't even do my child like that. Child come ask me. And I'm and, and saying, for real though, Dad, for real. For real though. <laughs> like they about to cut my life. For real. I'm about to get kicked out of school. Are you going to come down and help for real? Jesus says to his disciples, my people are going to talk to your people. 
My group talks to your group. My camp talks to your camp. My theology communicates to your theology. My vision communicates to yours. His disciples, John, has his own group of people who admire him, but when the rubber meets the road, he sends his posse, his group of folk, his entourage. Because your entourage can't save you. The boys who hang wood cannot redeem you. So they go to Jesus and say, all they're doing is asking you one straightforward question. Are you the one? And Jesus refuses. But he does tell them this. Tell John what you see and what you hear. Now, hearing and seeing are critical. They're critical to our lives in many ways. They've been critical to our people in many ways. And Jesus reinforces the value of what you hear and of what you see. Because what Jesus knows is that if I got to tell you who I am, 